Welcome to Beyond the Game, where we take a look into the lives of student athletes both within and beyond their game. I'm your host, Gina Chohara, and today I'm joined by Bed Woodmancy and Francesco Hosino. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having us. So I'd like to kick off and just learn a little bit more about you guys. Ben, what was it like growing up in Ohio and Francesco in Connecticut? Yeah, so I'm from uh, the area of Columbus, Ohio, which is Buckeye country. And I grew up a Michigan fan, so I definitely took a lot of stick for that uh, growing up. But now that I'm here, there's nowhere else I'd rather be. Yeah, you know, growing up in New England, there's all that hustle and bustle close to New York and Boston. Coming out to Michigan, I kind of like the slower pace of life. Everybody's nice to each other. Awesome. And I'd like to get a little background about what inspired your passion for rowing. Yeah, I mean, I've been rowing since middle school. So, you know, continuing all through high school, I knew no brainer I'd continue it in college, finish out my rowing career here at Michigan. For me, I didn't row in high school. I walked on my freshman year. I did soccer and track in high school. And I think one of the turning points that got me interested in rowing was in high school. I read The Boys in the Boat, uh, which they just made a movie about. And so when I got to Michigan, I saw that we had a rowing team. I thought it would be a great opportunity to try something new. In addition to having a passion for sports, is there a coach or a mentor or someone who had a large impact on your trajectory to lead you to continue rowing? Yeah, for me, it's our head coach, Greg Hartsif. Uh I think he's the best rowing coach there is. He's been our coach here for over 30 years, has really built an incredible program, and is just, you know, had a great impact on my life. And definitely, I wouldn't be here, I don't think, if we didn't have such a good coach. So for me, it's Greg. Yeah, Ben, you kind of took my answer there. But another good coach that I had was uh, my high school coach, Steve Samoski. He did a really good job, you know, teaching us how to row, helping us fall in love with it. And ultimately, that's what made me, you know, continue my love for rowing in college. Thank you so much for sharing that. And at what point did you understand that you both wanted to and were able to pursue rowing at a collegiate level? Yeah, you know, I love competition, love sports, especially rowing. And when I came into Michigan, I had no idea that, like, our program was so good, so funded by the alumni. So I said to myself, holy cow, this is going to be a great experience. For me, it was uh, the first workout I ever did for the rowing team. There was open tryouts, and I didn't think I'd be any good, but I placed pretty well, and I realized that, you know, this is something I could be good at, and I just kind of took it and ran with it. And Ben, you're from Ohio. You're from Connecticut. Could you tell me a little bit more about what influenced you to pursue your sport at the University of Michigan? Yeah, so in Ohio, there wasn't too much high school rowing. There's a lot more in Michigan and in the East Coast where Francesco's from. Uh, so I wasn't really exposed to it. And it was really some great recruiting efforts by the team. We spent a lot of money on trying to recruit new talent. Um, so I got you know emails and I remember I got a letter in the mail one day from the team. And I think that's really what kind of pushed me into seeing if I wanted to try this out. Yeah, like Ben said, there's a lot of rowing in the Northeast, a lot of rowing in Connecticut especially. And I think this is really cool to see all my high school teammates go out of different, uh, different uh, colleges. So I get to race my best friend at Bucknell, another one of my teammates at Purdue. So it's kind of cool to like flip, the script, flip the script a little bit. So after choosing Michigan, could you tell me about what was challenging about transitioning into both your collegiate sport as well as Michigan in general? Yeah, definitely. That high school to college um, transition is not easy for anyone, but I feel like rowing makes it a whole lot easier. You know, you go in, you have immediately 70, 80 friends that you get right off the rip. Um, you know, I think rowing helps with class a lot too, having something to do that's not studying in the ugly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely agree with Francesco. Um, for me, it was that community that was immediately there for me and that's continued for me. Like, I row with eight of my teammates. Um, we have a rowing house, and I live with them. It's great. Uh, Francesco lives with a bunch of his teammates, too. And it's just built a really good community that has really helped that transition. Just last night, studied with five of my teammates at The Ugly. We do this all the time. Um, so 
it's really good. That community is, is invaluable. You've both mentioned and highlighted how the team dynamic is super positive. So could you tell me a little bit more about what the team dynamic looks like leading up to a big regatta? Yeah, so the regattas are what we train for. You know, we, we suffer through winter training, uh, you know, hard days on the water, all for those big regattas. Uh, it's what we live for. So everyone, before we go to these races, is really determined and there's really one mindset it's rowing you can't do it individually it's you have to do it together not just physically but also mentally and emotionally um so it's really cool it's almost like a hive mind we all we all have that one that one goal and it's just really cool to see yeah ben ben really does raise a lot of good points there uh another thing that i want to mention is like the fact that we all have to pay to do this so unlike most uh, sports at Michigan, we actually have to you know, pay our dues to be a part of the team. And I think that like really builds something that we can call our own. And before races, it's like, okay, we're doing all this money. We're working out all this, all this time. So like, of course, we're going to do our best. Of course, we're going to do it for each other. And Ben, you went on to be named first team academic All-American. And Francesco, you were freshman All-American having super accomplishing seasons. Could you tell me about a moment you were most proud of? Yeah, definitely. You know, rowing through the season, you get to see a lot of improvement, right? And especially me as a coxswain, I kind of help facilitate that improvement. So seeing the boat cross the finish line first and you can say like, okay, I definitely contributed so much to this. I saw everybody grow. It just, you know, it's just as valuable as actually winning the medal. For me, a race that immediately pops into mind is my freshman year uh, at, in Philly, Philadelphia. There's a big race out there called Neck Cup. And my boat had, had been doing so well leading up to it. And we were, you know, kind of, we were tired. We were worried, how is this going to go? It was our first really major race against D1 funded schools. So that's a quick aside is a fun aspect of our sport is that um, unfunded teams like ourselves can go against uh, funded teams across the nation, uh, which is really cool. And we win. A lot. Uh, we've been in every program, I think, except Harvard and Washington. So it's pretty cool. But anyway, uh, back to the story. We were having a tough week. We went out to Philly, and you know, we we took gold medal. We were the only Michigan boat to get gold that day, and it was won by the tightest of margins. And it was just it was an incredible feeling. I'll definitely never forget it. And Ben, you touched a little bit about obstacles that one might face. Could you guys tell me a little bit about a time when you felt most defeated and how did you work through that? Yeah, so for me last year, my sophomore year, I suffered a broken rib uh, while rowing. Um, it's a pretty common injury in our sport, but it knocked me out for a while. Uh, but thankfully, I was able to finish out the season uh, rowing on the broken rib, it felt good enough where I thought I could do it. Um, I was able to compete at nationals, so definitely overcame that challenge. But then, unfortunately, again this year, uh, same kind of thing happened. So I'm going to be out for, for a little bit longer now. Uh, but, you know, things happen for reasons. And I think just like last time, you know, it'll lead to something greater. Yeah, last year, the boat that I was in, we lost by 0.5 seconds. And in rowing terms, that's literally like, starting the stroke versus finishing the stroke at the finish line. You know, all the seniors in the boat got off feeling defeated. But like I mentioned earlier, that was one of the boats that had been in that really, really improved the season. So all it took was one huddle up and say, you know what, we rode the best we possibly could to just get over it and feel really good about ourselves otherwise. So after working through these obstacles, could you tell me about some of your goals for the future? Well, we lost the national championship last year, so that's going to be our biggest goal for this coming coming season in the spring is just winning that, bringing it back home. Yeah, definitely. We really want to take that trophy back from Purdue. Um, so that's goal number one. And another big goal we have is we're trying to send some crews out to England this summer to com compete at Henley Royal Regatta, which is the most famous regatta in the world. We, we go about once every four years or so. So we're going to try to you know, do some damage out there against the best universities in the world like Ox Oxford and Cambridge and it's gonna be really fun. You guys highlighted the time and the dedication you spend to your sport. Where would someone find you when you aren't in the water? 
Uh, so for me, I am a music minor, so I play the cello. Um, so you'll see me practicing my cello a lot. I also work in a research group in the Earth and Environmental Science Department. So I spend a lot of my time there looking at rocks. Um, but yeah, those are probably two major things for me. Yeah, one of my hobbies outside of rowing is cooking. You know, being Italian, I got all the family recipes and stuff. I love to cook for my roommates, so I guess you'll find me in the kitchen. And you guys both went on to create your own documentary, which highlighted your team and Title IX. Could you tell me a little bit more about that and what inspired that idea? Yeah, so Ben and I uh, were partners in, a, in an honors course uh, last semester. Uh, and we were tasked with making a documentary on a topic we chose. So, of course, we chose rowing, you know, sports class. And we highlighted the fact that the women's team at Michigan is fully funded, you know, approved by Title IX, all that stuff. But we don't have that funding. So we wanted to compare, you know, some of the similar similarities and differences with our friends on the women's team. Yeah, it was a super fun experience. Um, it was great. It's always great when you have your teammates in, in your class. It's always really fun. So me and Francesca had a good time making that documentary. And before we wrap up, I would like to know if you could give one piece of advice to an aspiring rower, what would it be? Yeah, for me, uh, it was, it's just the next stroke is the most important stroke. Um, something our coach likes to say, and I think it really rings true. You're going to have bad strokes. You're going to have bad workouts. You're going to have bad races. But the, the most important one is always going to be that next one. You've got to have a short memory and just focus on what's ahead of you. Yeah, that's a good point, Ben. Um, something else that I want to add is like, you know, it's a shared sock. You know, rowing is like one of the most um, team focused sports. So going through those hard training days, it only is a better feeling at the end when you win that, you know, that you can share with your teammates. So you don't really find in uh, other sports, even other team sports, the fact that everybody's suffering to the highest degree and it all pays off in one moment. It's so worth it. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. Ben and Francesco, thank you so much for joining me. And thank you for joining us at Beyond the Game. Go, Go Blue! Blue.